y'all welcome back to another one this video is super super awesome and i cannot be more excited to post this and let you guys see this incredibly cinematic film from the road to 100. the road to 100 is ryan bassam and kime they came hunting with me up in alberta this year i mentioned to you guys that they were starting a youtube channel and uh, they were kind enough to let me have their film that they created from the three days hunting with me up in alberta to post on my channel for you guys so i am asking I, i'm i'm not gonna beg because you are missing out if you do not go subscribe to these these guys channel the road to 100 i'll drop the link down in the description below after you watch this film you're gonna think oh my gosh this is the channel i've been looking for i they're one of the only channels i watch on the old youtube um it's super incredibly well put together films from giant trips these guys take. They go to Alberta, they go to Manitoba, Sweden, New Zealand, Mexico, and the goal for them is the road to 100 species of waterfowl. And they document basically the entire series that they are doing, and it is something that I am super jealous of because... I'm used to just shooting mallards, pintails, and honkers, you know what I mean? So being able to go shoot harlequin, going to shoot all these exotic teal and, and different types of species of uh, geese and ducks is what they are documenting, and it's put together so freaking well that uh, I want to uh, see you guys find a new channel to go watch and go subscribe. They do giveaways on almost every episode, shotgun, gear drops, boots, duck calls, cases of shotgun shells, all sorts of stuff. So if you guys will do me a huge favor, and not only me, but you guys, you guys watching this, a huge favor if you want some more content, really, really good content to watch, go subscribe to The Road to 100. It, it is super awesome. I would not be putting this on here if I didn't believe in these guys. I'm going to be following along on their journey this entire time, and I'm hoping they let me come on some of these stupid awesome trips that they get to go on. Um, and do not forget, also, go to duckswaterfowl.com. They just had a brand new cold gear drop, new hoodies, uh, warm hats, awesome stuff. Don't forget to use my code COL10 to save you guys some money. Let's get into this video, and uh, I really hope you guys enjoy this because I, I loved it. I loved it. In this episode, we're loading up the truck and taking a drive to visit our northern neighbor, Canada, where we will be field hunting mallards and geese with the Cole Townsend Old Dog Outfitters. Get ready for a few days of hunting some familiar species with some awesome people in this episode of The Road to 100. In the heart of every waterfowl hunter, there's a memory where it all began. For us, the waterfowl life started in the southern United States in the flooded timbers and expansive marshland. But as our journey unfolded, the quest for waterfowl led us beyond our home. The passion eventually takes us to different flyways, different countries, and beyond. We discovered that the culture of waterfowl transcends borders. And so, a daring dream took root. A dream to hunt 100 different species of waterfowl across the globe. We wanted to share the story of adventure and encounters with fellow hunters, each sharing the same passion as us. The landscapes will change, the species will vary, but the passion remains the same. One dream, a long road, 100 species. This is the Road to 100. Already. <laughs> so what does the road to 100 mean? I tried to explain it. On yeah, that. so um, basically the next five to six years, the plan is to to try to hunt 100 different waterfowl species around the world. Oh, okay. And so 
we'll hit 13, 14 countries, 15, 16 states, and Jeez. the goal is for all three of us, Kaim included, even though he's behind the camera right now, to each try to get 100 species, tell those stories along the way, bring cool guests, hunt with cool people. That's awesome. And just kind of tell that collective community story awesome. is, is the goal. Go anywhere. It'll be fun. Y'all tell them I'll go anywhere. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we've already got ducks in the decoys. Legal shooting time is like now, so Alberta, here we go. Let's do this. Take them, boys. On the left, right here. Take these out front, boys. Ooh. Good tag team on that last one. There you go. There you go. <laughs> Here in Alberta, first morning. Here with Cole and Whitey from Old Dog Outfitters. Uh, temperatures like I don't know. It's not freezing. It's like mid 30s right now. Hardly any wind at all. Uh, they got us in this this A-frame that's brushed in like a champ. Um, and all we got out here is maybe three, four dozen full-body Canada geese, a couple spinners for their for our duck decoys. And that's it. But these birds, they just, they want to be here. So it's cool. You can hear them talking. Like we, we're just starting to see some good color coming to these birds. It's mid-October. Um, it's just a fun time to be up here in this part of the flyway. So good start. Good, good start. Take them out front, guys. Shoot them. Nice. <laughs> Take them out front, guys. Oh my lord. Those all hens? Every one's a hen. <laughs> They're all hens. No drakes? There's not one no drake drakes. in the whole group. Let them go. Man, that was <laughs> unreal. That was incredible. Up there. We could have hey, like well take that off. That yeah. that was gonna be dirty. Another group coming down. Oh, look at all those. <laughs> hey boys, nice shooting, boy. You get that one on the left. Oh, I got it. Hell yeah, there's some green, baby. Thanks for staying down. Take them out front. Come on, come on. Three out front. Out front. Man, it is nuts this morning. I'm getting off of big game stuff in Montana, coming to this. This is a great great introductory hunt to this season i am stoked i can't believe the stuff that's flying right now this is pretty awesome <laughs> Citrus. You know, the citrus is much better than the beaver piss, which we originally tried a few years ago. Citrus is nice. Kaim swears. Oh, we got a bunch of birds right here. Kaim swears the root beer is the best, so I haven't tried that one, but citrus is nice. Seven. Take them, boys. Oh, a spinner! Nice. <laughs> the old helicopter down. <laughs> Hopefully, a little after nine. I think we're probably halfway through our goose summit right now, but uh, geese are starting, starting to get up and fly a little bit more. We have no wind, so it's a little bit of a challenge to get these things to square up and do what we need them to, but we're picking them apart little by little. Okay. Little by little. 
Yeah, I was hoping they'd come back by now so we could sh see if we could get I don't know how they get out groups. front like that. They just don't fit out front. They just act so man. good. They've been shot a few times. The cold house. <laughs> Recap. First hunt today wasn't bad. For no wind all morning, it's switching all morning. It wasn't bad. The ducks did it right. We're still messing with local Canada geese here. Uh, haven't really had any migration for honkers up here in southern Alberta. So we did the best we could to work them in as tight as we could. With the wind switching all morning, we switched decoys up. But overall, pretty good hunt. Shot a five-man limit of mallards and a few pintails. And what did we shoot? About 27 honkers today. So not a bad opening morning. Tomorrow we've got a 15-mile-an-hour northwest wind. So. Rock on for that. Second hunt ought to be a pretty good one. So we've been actually saving this field for a windy day because the roost is to our west, about 800 yards away. So no wind. If we shot, we'd blow the roost. So we've been waiting on this good, this probably 15 to 20 mile per hour. Hopefully by the time the sun comes up, the wind will be blowing 15 to 20. We're going to be shooting away from the roost. We've got a northwest wind, so we're facing southeast, right? Away from the roost. They shouldn't hear our gunshots. The ducks and geese have been feeding right here. Uh, there's a lot of food on the ground in this particular area. So if we were to have gotten in the middle of the field, hunted it with no wind, it would have been, you know, iffy. They could have just landed here and we could have killed nothing. So we've been waiting for this day. Finally happened. And uh, yeah, so. Got about, I don't know, 10 dozen, seven, eight, 10 dozen decoys out, a couple sleeper shells in there. All full body, son. All full yeah. body goose decoys. Um, strung out about eight yards from the blind. We pushed them up a, a little bit closer to the blind so we could bring the geese in just a little bit closer with this wind. They'll get out quick, so we're going to try to get them uh, in as tight as possible. They should be flying lower to the ground, not looking into the A-frame like yesterday and circling us. <laughs> Hopefully we can get a six-man limit of mallards and uh, honkers today. Do it. Go shoot him. Yeah. Nice yeah. shot. Take him out front, guys. Nice shot. Good shooting. That was a rain out there. Look at them curls, boy. Take them there, guys. Shoot these geese. Nice. Well done, well done. Well done. Job well done. What's that? Oh, I went for the far one. Good uh, job. That's the fourth time you've come past. Oh, baby. Wow, good shooting. Oh, nice. Only had two shots. With the wind, our hide was good, similar to the same hide we had yesterday. Uh, the only thing we can think with as much stubble as this is, and without any foliage being on the trees, and that green and the contrast of it just had the birds a little wigged out. They kept sliding off one side or the other of the blind. But good news is now we're going to just go finish our limit on an afternoon hunt. So we're going to pick this field up, trailer loaded, some food, and then uh, go to another spot. See if we can't uh, see if we can't beat this wind a little bit. Okay, well today we're feeling a lot more rested. We stopped by the gas station, got some more beaver buzz, feeling really energized. The guys did some awesome work on this blind. It is 
if the geese pick this out, they'll be super geese. So I'm feeling pretty good. It's just a great place to do a classic field hunt. I mean, I can hear them getting off right now. So we're excited. Gonna try to finish our limit today. Well, these guys are. I average about six shells a hunt between the filming. So, you know, but the filming has been great too. Um, it's, it's awesome when you can just put on a wide angle lens, stand up with the guys and feel like you're shooting, but not really. The footage has been great. So we're excited to put this one together. <laughs> It's always kind of interesting to me. I like to ask people because, you know, we both grew up in Texas and hunting mallards down there is a little bit different than hunting mallards up <laughs> yeah. here. And because, our, you know, our project's so species, you know, oriented and focused, um, I think a lot of people that hunt down south, they don't understand how hunting mallards in Canada geese is different up here. Yeah. I mean, what are, what are the biggest differences you see? Uh, I'd say first and foremost, the numbers are way different. Mm -hmm. There's a lot more mallards up here than uh a lot of places down in texas unless you get into a big farm country and shallow playa lakes really yeah. you're not really going to have the mallards or even i guess east texas out in the woods or some but yeah that's where i cut my teeth yeah and it's you just could get uh, some pretty good mallard shoots there but totally different than here still. yeah you know? it's all water hunting over there exactly so completely different um I mean, you can hunt water here too but i don't think it's as good right or as worth it now, most people come up here to field hunt mallards yeah. and experience mm -hmm. you know, that aspect of it. I mean, even in Texas, it has to be, I mean, it's all weather dependent to field hunt ducks down in sure. Texas. So you need snow on the ground or you need something, some really cold weather to make the ducks feed. Because in Texas, they just feed in the water. Right. There's all kinds right. of food in the water for them in Texas for puddle ducks and a lot of gadwalls and exactly. all that kind of stuff. Exactly. So. And biologists I've spoken to in the past, you know, their nutrition needs here before they stage and make that big migration down mm -hmm. versus right before they start breeding and then reverse migrate. It's, right. It's a totally different diet yeah, they based have, on those they needs. They have to eat up here. Exactly. They have to eat to, yeah. to travel south that far. You had to choose between Texas and Canada. Oh, God. <laughs> uh, honestly, I'd probably choose Texas, but... yeah. I know when I say that, I'd miss the field duck hunting. Yeah. You know, you get up here and you hunt field ducks every single day. Right. And, you know, it kind of gets into yeah. this routine pattern. It's the same thing every day, which it's the same down there when you're goose hunting. But sure, sure. If I was talking species, I'd choose. I'd choose the lesser Canada hunt yeah. to hunt over ducks. Gotcha. Just because I like goose hunting more. Gotcha. Uh, I feel like they respond to a call. You get to talk to them more and they, right. they re react a little better. Whereas up here, you can just put a mojo out and kind of exactly. blow your call a little bit and get and them in. And they're going to do the thing, exactly. Shoot these. Down front. Oh, click. Go down, go down, go down. Mm. Did y'all see those low ones? I didn't see them until we popped up I saw either. the low ones. <laughs> Well, besides getting totally accosted by this freaking thing behind me, <laughs> um, we sat here and um, had some good conversation, watched the sunset, shot two geese, I think. And so that's just how she goes sometimes. So we're hoping for a little bit better shoot in the morning, but still can't complain about day two. I mean, we, we still had a pretty decent morning, got a lot of good shooting in. Um, and hey, any day you're out in the field is a good day as far as I'm concerned. So we're just going to enjoy the last few minutes here, maybe get lucky, have something squeak in and wrap her up for the day. Okay, so we got our last morning here in Alberta. Um, we're set up not too far from a golf course <laughs> and uh, um, birds been roosting over there. Should have another really solid mallard in, in Canada goose shoot. So yeah. <laughs> we just hit legal shooting hour, had a couple different groups of mallards come in. And yeah, it's uh, another awesome Alberta sunrise out in front of us. And these first few shots should be pretty good for Kai because it's like this pretty pink and 
ducks are going to be silhouetted in the sky. It's going to be a good one. So another glorious morning chasing the birds. Got him! Finishing up our Road to 100 episode here in Alberta. This is Alberta part one. Um, we've had an awesome time here with Cole in Canada. Uh, it's been a great hunt. We uh, were able to target two of our key species to kick this thing off for North America. Um, and that is the infamous mallard duck as well as the greater Canada goose. Um, I think everybody can probably relate to the fact that your first birds were probably either a mallard or a Canada goose. And it's just kind of awesome to, to be able to come up here to Alberta, hunt them in this way. You know, it's a lot of field hunting up here, specifically for mallards and Canada geese. As they migrate south, you get to hunt them in different variety of locations, um, hunting tactics, etc. I grew up hunting them over water and in the trees and the timber. But uh, to hunt mallards in the field is awesome. If it's not on your list, highly recommend it. And, and yeah, we're excited. This specific Canada goose, because there's 11 subspecies of Canada geese, we believe based on our location is the, um, the uh, Great Basin Canada goose. And so this and the Maxima, which is closer over to the central flyway, which is your giant Canada goose, are very comparable as far as size and coloration. But uh, we're checking this off as our Great Basin Canada goose and our mallards, and we're excited to hit the road, keep after them. We're going to head it south and see what else we can get into, check off some more birds. Uh, Kayam, Logan, and I all successfully checked these off, and now we're gonna pack it in and go. And uh, I think that'll do it for another awesome. episode. That's Alberta part one. There's an exciting Alberta part two coming not next Sunday, but the Sunday after that, so stay tuned. Thanks guys, appreciate it. All right, guys, I really hope this video blew your mind. Uh, I know the hunts weren't even like that great. They weren't. Their first hunt, their first duck hunt was pretty, pretty freaking awesome. And then some, some average hunts, but they got their mallard knocked off, their Canada goose basin, uh, greater Canada goose knocked off. It, it's just an awesome, awesome deal that they got. I got to be a part of uh, their film series. And I really hope you guys don't forget to go subscribe to their channel. This isn't for me, one bit, I don't get a dime, I don't get nothing. This isn't an advertisement. This is me trying to give you guys some brand new, fresh, cinematic, uh, awesome content to go watch. You know, we, we can't post every day. So if you can watch me, you can watch this other guy and you can add this channel to your watch list. And these guys are doing something extremely special. It's almost every waterfowler's dream to kill a hundred species of waterfowl. So to be able to be, be someone that gets to follow along on their journey and see every step and, and every action they take is something special. So I hope you guys do go subscribe. I'm trying to put a deal together together with Ryan that if y'all 5,000, if y'all get 5,000 of y'all to go subscribe, we're going to give away some badass shotguns. So it's in the works, but... Uh, Please go subscribe. They're super awesome people, super awesome films, super awesome hunts, and they're going to kill some really, really cool stuff that's never been seen on YouTube. So the next video I'll be posting is from The Road to 100, and they did a big old giant podcast with me, and it tells my entire story from when I got started to where I'm at now. And I think it's something that I've never done on this channel. I've never told you guys about my past life but you get to understand where I came from what I'm doing now and the whole nine yards so 
stay tuned for that. Be sure to hit that thumbs up button. Hit that thumbs up button. Gosh dang it. It's been slacking lately, y'all. Y'all been slacking on the thumbs up button. It takes five seconds. Not even. It takes two seconds. Boom. Thumbs up. All right, guys. We'll catch you on the next one. Yeah. <laughs>